Hello everybody, I'm George from Ireland, still telling you more about the um, London Necropolis Railway. Um, and uh, so we're at the back of that building. We saw this one from the other side, from where the Westminster Bridge Road side. It's one of the red bricks up high. And they came through, oh, difficult to show you the archway, yeah, where the green um, surface is on the road. Remember you saw it from the other side, they come through here. I'm not sure why the building had to be so tall. What was up there? Offices? They store the coffins that high? They could be stored here for some days before being transported or, or taken to Brookwood and, 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 and kept there for a few days and, and before the funeral if the family weren't going to travel with the coffin. Um, anyway, and I discovered this place by coming around, going a bit further up Westminster Bridge Road towards Waterloo, and this side street, you probably see where the blue doors are, um, those um, little uh, arches under the railway, I don't know what they're used for, are walking up this cobblestone street shows you, you know, it's not been changed in well over a century, this little footpath, and then up this um, metal staircase. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's where they came through. This is the sort of the 1902 iteration of the London Necropolis Railway. Um, and then walking up here you can see how it connects to Waterloo because the London Necropolis Railway Station seems to be, was a few metres from the actual line. So I don't know whether they walked up these actual stairs. you think they'd want something grander. Now, lifts did exist in those days. And I read something about a steam-powered lift for raising the coffins. It could be rather heavy. Um, and behind here, obviously, you can't get in there because this big building for all sorts of uh, electrical equipment, danger of death. But maybe you can see up high the remains of a railway line, the rusting um, metal rails, not being used since 1941 going straight ahead and connecting to most of the railway. So there we are. And it's right behind this red brick building, which was the entrance to the station. I'm not sure whether there's waiting rooms or storage space for the uh, coffins. Okay, so I don't know if this is the way they came in or not. Whether that red and brown brick building behind me existed prior to, uh, to 1941, it seems a bit more modern to me. Obviously we had steam trains back then, diesel came in later, electricity after that, so this big buzzing, uh, um, uh, electric contraption wouldn't have existed. Here is any clearer to you there where the railway line was and went straight forward. And then I always pass these from um, uh, from Waterloo and wonder what they are. These like Nissan huts, these temporary buildings which have become rather permanent, seem to be artist studios. So it's a voyage of discovery for me and it brings out my inner child. <laughs> it's just so gleeful to see all these places. I've always wondered where they were or how to get to them and what they are. And now uh, my curiosity is satisfied. The mystery is solved and my questions are answered. So I'm absolutely in clover. What a thrill. So join me on this uh, voyage of discovery. And there you can see how we'll have, we'll have connected. I don't know if this is used at all. It's rather um, rusting. Maybe it's not so clear with the naked eye. You can hear a noisy train, the train behind me. Southwest trains go here. And they built it. There's a black outer fence and this gray inner fence. Or one of these platforms for me that they can move them. And that's how it connects to the main line railway station and moving on to the west. Okay, out west because Waterloo is a terminus. You come from from the west and you can't go further west. You can change, or further east rather, you can change to Waterloo East. And that big building that I was telling you about, and I wasn't sure whether it existed in the old days, is this brown brick building here behind me. Yeah, we're very close to that. And there's some people in that artist studio, but it looks like the chap's having a, um, having a haircut. Okay, so now you see what it's all about. So presumably that's where it actually started. And this is what the other YouTube channels don't show you. There are other videos about the London Necropolis Railway. Now this was a prime target for bombing because obviously London Waterloo Station was one of the busiest stations in the kingdom. Moreover, it's very close to a number of bridges, Westminster Bridge, Waterloo Bridge, the, um, the Hungerford Bridge. So um, the Luftwaffe was uh, leaving its calling card on a regular basis. Now I think it's Hungerford Bridge, it's the ladies bridge is it's principally constructed by females, not exclusively, built during the Second World War. The only one built during the Second World War. Why? Was it just to have an extra one in case the other ones were taken out of commission? Okay, so that's enough from me, George from Ireland. I hope you enjoyed what you see um, and the fact that um, I go to great lengths to discover these things and uh, it uh, is absolutely Elysian for me to find out these things uh, that I want to know. I've always wondered about these things. Uh, just uh, London is, is ooh, enigmatic sometimes and I'm always finding out new things. I used to like to devour these books. I never knew that about London and um, so forth. So it does, doesn't seem the most salubrious area even though we're very close to the centre. We're just a bit south of the River Thames and it's a garage here. Now in British English that means a place where cars are, are repaired 
really it's not so much um, a place where you actually keep your car I suppose you could say your garage or that area where you actually park your car if you have um, a special tiny little building attached to your house or even detached from your house where you put the car so that's it and then I was reading a sign up there in that area and it said oh you must close the gate at the top of the stairs at all times well they didn't thanks very much uh, rail track rail tracks the state organization which owns the actual tracks and maintains them and the stations doesn't own the trains or operate the trains those are various companies such as southwest trains so this is this is where i came up i thought will i not be allowed in or something and i was just thinking is this gate supposed to be locked but thankfully it wasn't and here are more railway arches okay where i was walking you see that sort of metal wall there's a bit of a metal wall on the other side where I was walking up there, which I didn't show you, which suggests it's actually built as part of a railway line where those Nissan huts were. Of course, we used to have way more railway lines till the, um, there are about three times more railway stations than there are now. The height of the railways in this country was the first order. A few closed just after the First World War, a few in the 1930s, a few just after the Second World War, a lot in the 50s and huge numbers in the 60s by Dr. Beeching, his Beeching report, Reshaping Britain's Railways. So back to West Messenger Bridge Road, close to where we started, on the opposite side of the street. That's the main line of rail, um, line Waterloo is that away, and obviously going west is that away towards Brookwood Cemetery. Okay, and I'll take you back to um, uh, the outside of what was the London Acropolis Railway Station from um, 1902 until 1941, which was the year of its closure. Uh, so I hope you've learned something. I have found it um, utterly gripping. These things are just riveting for me, finding things out. And further down Westminster Bridge Road is the former headquarters of MI6. So that's the United Kingdom's external intelligence service, which I filmed on another occasion. I read uh, Richard Tomlinson's um, uh, absolutely fascinating book about it, which is a real revelation called The Big Breach, as in it's a disclosure of uh, confidential information. It, 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 included multiple breaches of the Official Secrets Act, which he'd signed. OK, so Westminster Bridge House. That's what I showed you originally, but of course I was across the street when I did so, so I showed you it from a, from a different angle so you could see the whole of it. Um, all right, that's me, George from Ireland. Thank you so much. So please donate to me on uh, PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. Callahan spelled C-A-L-L-A-G-H-A-N. And... Um, no donation is too small, they're all received with the uttermost appreciation, so um, I am no ingrate. Uh, that's all. Toodle pip.